So this is a kiln with three sections, one, two, three, and it has a kiln sitter right, let's see if I can point at it. Well, I'll just come closer. This is the outside of the kiln sitter and this is the inside of the kiln sitter. Now, the way the kiln sitter works is there is a rod right here. When I wiggle this up and down, you can see on the outside, this lever moving up and down. So the way this works is you take a cone, and I've got some cones right here. You take a cone and you lift the bar and put the cone underneath. Let's see if I can do this with my left hand. Yeah. And there are some little notches that it will slide all the way up against at the back. Okay? You want it centered. Now, you see that that has lowered my bar here on the front, but my switch is on, so I gotta do that again. I'm gonna have to set this down to do it, so. Set it right here. So, I'm gonna lift this switch and I'm gonna hold this down, which will raise the bar so that I can then slide this cone in. Make sure it's lined up. All right. Now it doesn't look centered from there, but, but it is, it's pretty centered. Okay, so what happens is when that cone reaches a certain temperature, it's gonna bend. And when it bends, the weight of the rod is gonna push down on the far side, which is gonna cause this side to go up, cause this to drop down, and that will shut off your kiln. You have a backup, which is a timer that you should always use. And uh, you have switches on the outside of your kiln that you use to turn it up, okay? So each one of those switches controls one ring of elements inside the kiln. Once I'm ready to turn on my kiln, I close the lid. And I usually latch it and then I will uh, unless it's really wet I'll leave the uh, top peep hole open but I'll plug all the other peep holes now if there's you know if I'm running to the end of the semester and there's really wet stuff in there I may only plug the bottom one or two so I've got that done my timer, I'm gonna set, I know I'll be back in 10 hours. What time is it, okay? So I'll set it for 10 hours. I'll push the button to turn on the kiln, and then I will turn the bottom switch only to low. I'll leave it overnight. When I come in the morning, the first thing I'm gonna do is if I've left peepholes open, I'll close all of them but the top one. I will turn both of my other knobs up to low and leave it for two hours. And also you need to make sure that you'll turn up your timer some so it doesn't time out on you after being left on overnight. After two hours, I'll come in, I'll turn all three switches to medium. Two more hours, I'll turn all three switches to high. And I will set my timer for four hours because I know it'll take about three and a half hours and that's my safety in case something happens to interfere with the kiln sitter. So if a piece blew up and messed up the cone or something like that in the kiln sitter and y'all, I have had a kiln over fire. It is not a pretty sight. Entire load of earthenware turned to liquid basically. Shelves all collapsed. Kiln was ruined. Okay, so you want to make sure and I always stay here until it turns off or uh, yeah, you should always monitor your kill. My only exception is I will leave it on overnight on low. So that's it. When you come in in the morning, this should have, or when you come, uh, before you leave in the afternoon, this should be dropped down. This light will be off. 
this will probably be glowing orange. And uh, you just leave it all buttoned up like this. The next morning you come in and it will be off. You flip your switches to off because they will still be on high. And then you can unplug your peep holes. You can lift the lid just a little so that some of the heat can escape. And then what I do is as I go through the day, I'll use a kiln shelf support and prop the lid up a little, prop the lid up a little more till it gets to the point where I can open it all the way and let it cool. You wanna make sure it cools because, uh, you know, it's easier to unload if you're not having to use pot holders. But anyway, um, it's better if you let it cool off before you unload it. 